Hey guys, welcome back. Well, let's see. Can I fix this? Yeah, sure. I'll fix it. Let's take a little bit of time, a little bit of thought process. It doesn't appear that any of the metal itself is cracked. A little bit of paint chipping away. It doesn't appear there's any cracks. So we are going to, both ears are bent. This one obviously a lot worse. Um, I'm gonna put it in this press here. This is my scrapyard press. Found this at the scrapyard. Someone was scrapping it and then they just gave it to me. Uh, I didn't have these plates on it. So I put these plates on here so I can kind of set it up how I want. So we're gonna set it up in here. We're gonna use a 100 ton ram and we're gonna try to just start squeezing it, and then but what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean all this paint off and we're gonna heat this whole area and get that nice and relaxed before we start pressing on it. So hopefully, um, hopefully there's no cracks. But after we get it pressed back to where I think it should be, we will uh, clean it really good and then uh, do a, a dye penetrant test. You can see that bottom ears just twist it out a little bit but this will be fun all right let's uh let's get to it um well, we have the new pin here we're gonna be making the pin the old pin actually snapped in half um looks like there's another hold down issue i'm assuming the bolt broke off same Thing that always happens, bolt breaks. They try to weld it, that breaks immediately. And yeah, well, yeah. So, don't neglect your equipment. This is what happens. All right, well, let's, we're gonna figure out how to get this kind of staged up in here, best we can figure. Um, and then we'll uh, start pressing on it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat it up a little bit just to kind of burn the paint off. And then it'll also, uh, you know, get all this grease loosened up so we can wipe it off. But we wanna be able to get all the paint out of all those uh, crevices. So what I'm gonna do is heat it up, basically burn all the paint, wire wheel it, the wire wheel will get in there and get all those from the casting, the forging, and then, uh, Looks like it was cast. Kind of see a mark. So we're gonna do that and then uh, get it cleaned up. Okay, so we got this all wire wheeled after the heat was applied. You can see it's pretty clean. And you can see, we got some nice stress marks right there. Probably end up gouging that out and welding it up. And then we got this. Not really sure. That's kind of weird how it started to rip right there like that. 
but we can fix that when we line bore it and just cut it out a little bit further. All right, so we're gonna heat this up with using the propane just to kind of get it hot and then uh, we'll get you know, the press kind of set and then we'll probably switch over to acetylene to, uh, to get it a little bit warmer in this area before we start pressing on it. Kind of got the press prepped a little bit. We've got a piece tacked on here and everything should should fit pretty pretty good here. So all right, we're gonna get it preheated and then I get it in the press. So that press jumped out of there a couple times. Ended up flipping it over and pressing it this way. That seems to help a lot. So we got it a little bit straighter. So now we're gonna try to get that tip bent up. So we're gonna stack some plates in there on this side we press that deal up hopefully just that tip will kind of roll up we'll see what happens we're trying to get it hot to get it relaxed a little bit see what happens we've uh, got a hundred ton ram with our Arab or hydraulic setup it's an OTC pump you can get all that stuff on Amazon so let's see what uh, happens here
right, so we got it flipped back over again. So I made this piece to sit in there so I could hopefully slide that in there and then press this ear down just a little bit more, be a little bit more accurate because that's the, the inside dimension that we're trying to get. So if I could slide that in there. And then this ear is also kind of bent up a little bit. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I wanna get this one a little bit closer before I mess with that. All right, we got it pretty close. Let's see. Just slightly off there. And we'll pick it up the forklift and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm trying to come up with a way to see if you can, you can see how off this side is. It's, it's kind of twisted up still. Try and come up with a way to push that down. And I mean, you can't just put this in the press and you can't just press right here, holding with the forklift because it would simply just lift the other side. Um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna like do a spacer underneath here, underneath there, kind of an L-shaped. And then I'm going to weld some material over this side so this side will kind of be free hanging. We'll preheat everything and then I'll press this down. And, you know, I don't really care what the inside looks like right now. I'm trying to get the outside, you know, close because we're going to cut it all out and line bore it. Um, another thing, this project um, has actually been pretty challenging. And I do do like this challenge. This has been going on for about a week, I would say. I've been trying to mess with this a little bit here and there each day. It takes about 30 minutes to heat it up with the propane torch. I'm sure there's faster ways to do it, but I could just set it on there and walk away and do something else. So this is not a quick repair by any means, but it is challenging to me with what I have. So I do like it. I mean, these things are two and a quarter inches thick. It's not something you could just simply bend. So I'm gonna come up with something. Luckily, I had some four inch solid bar, you know, just laying around. Happened to be 4130. It actually came from the scrap yard. You've seen the shear video of me changing blades and stuff. You can see where they actually try to cut it with the shear and it didn't really do much, but so have these blocks here and we're probably going to utilize these for uh, some of the pressing and uh, oh, something else interesting i noticed again this press was free it was from the scrap yard but i did bend it got a nice bend in this piece now wasn't there before so oh, time to make a bigger one maybe i'll make a video about making a Super big shot press. All right, so we're gonna get this figured out. There's just a whole lot of 
standing here and thinking about the correct way or any way to go about this and just trial and error, try it one way, it doesn't work back and forth. There's a lot of that off camera that you're not seeing. So sometimes you're gonna see progress without any filming it's because I st stared at it for an hour and then I tried something and it actually worked. So, all right, we're gonna um, see if we can make this work here. All right, some of you might wonder about the danger of pressing. There is a real danger of parts flying out and things. I try to keep it at a very minimum and not stack a whole bunch of stuff in there if possible. I do have this expanded metal that I hung up here. So whenever I'm pushing that foot pedal, you know, I try to stay right here. And hopefully if anything happens, it won't get me. Obviously safety glasses and gloves, I mean, whatever you could think of. Um, so, trying to straighten this side, as I kind of expected, just kind of pulled my welds apart, but I only did one pass on the outside. So we're going to weld this up a little bit better, stick her back in there, and see if we can't get that ear pushed down, because it looked like it was moving and then that happened. So, we're going to... Give her a try again. All right, about 30 minutes of that, and she'll be ready to press down well.
so we have a major change of plans on this thing. We are going to cut this ear off and put a new ear on it. So after lots of thinking and deliberating and talking to my friend about this and everything, you know, we've got cracks in here, we've got cracks down here. I'm gonna be gouging probably 90% of this out anyways and welding it from, from the inside because of all those little cracks. So we're just gonna cut this off and we're gonna put a new one on there. Um, I straightened this one out so it's straight to everything else. It's got a couple high spots here, but we'll sand that down. So I had this, my friend Mitch machined this ear. on his CNC mill, does a really good job, except for right there, the bill got a little unhappy, but it's fine, it won't, won't hurt anything. Got a 30 degree weld prep there. Uh, this hole is undersized, so we will only need to weld this one side when we line bore it, and then we'll, when we you know do our final cut, we'll cut this side. So we're gonna cut this off we're gonna cut this ear off. We're gonna use the plasma. This is two and three eighths thick right here. We're gonna cut it back a little ways. So I need to get this out of the way so I can line that hole up better to this one. And then we will uh, cut it, you know, to the correct location after I get this out of the way. We're gonna be using our HK12 Beetle. I'm pretty sure this is the same um, machine that Curtis uses on CEE. We're just going to get our track set up over this, make a cut. So this is basically designed to be used with a oxyacetylene propane torch. I made a couple modifications to it so I could run my plasma on it. I made this plate and I made a collar that sits inside there. And that's all. And then the this will clamp around my plasma. I believe it go like that, and then I put a zip tie right here. Very simple, easy. Still have all of our adjustments. So, okay, let's get this all set up and uh, see how it handles that. All right, we got this thing all set up here. So we are going to power this off of the 800 air pack because it seems like it runs just a little bit better off of that than even my uh, phase converter. So we're going to run it off of that. We're going to use shop air because it will take a little bit of stress off of the machine. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing warmed up and see what happens.
So as you can see that worked out pretty well. It's pretty pretty thick, two and three eighths. Okay, we got this cut off. I went really smooth. Um, we have this lined up exactly where it needs to be. And then using square to tape measure and you know, a little bit of educated guessing. We have a new line here of where it needs to be. So then from that line would be beveled like that. So we're gonna try to straight cut it down there and then uh, check our fit, fitment again. I'm gonna put a, I have this big heavy wall piece of DOM. We're gonna pinch this in between the two when we weld it, but um, for fitment purposes, we'll also use that to uh, stick it in there and you know help hold it and line it, line things up or whatever. But there's a lot of weld on this side, so obviously it's going to want to pull. So we're going to bolt this in there, probably with like one inch all thread or whatever, and we'll pinch that close real tight and it probably won't really move too much doing it that way. All right, let's get to it. All right, so we got this fitted up here. We're gonna clean this side. So I don't think I'm gonna put a bevel on this side now because we have a, you know, we got a nice bevel going on here. We have a little gap for our landing. We're also probably gonna back gouge that and then weld it from the other side too. So I think we're gonna go with that. Gonna check a couple other things and then uh, tack it in place, get to welding. All right, so now that we've established the cut is good and everything is looking like it's gonna line up really well. So we're gonna you know, do a grinder cleanup, get all this middle scale off here, um, probably hit these high spots. That was the fastest way for him to do that bevel was just to step cut it down like that, which is fine. So we'll get all this cleaned up and then we'll get it tacked in there. Again, one thing I am doing is our spacer piece for the center. Um, it was just the hair long, so we're facing the end. So that will be nice and square as it sits in there. So when we pinch it together really tight, everything will stay, stay nice and straight.
we got our uh, all thread in here. It's the same all thread that I use for uh, pushing and pulling on bushings and to install them or take them out. So we got one inch B7 all thread, just some you know spacers that we use for pressing and all that. Uh, got that pinched together nice and tight. We're gonna get a nice preheat on this and start welding. We're gonna be using Lincoln 71A75 for the uh, wire and 7525 for the gas. 75% argon, 25% CO2. And we'll be running probably 30 or so CFH here in the shop. All right, let's uh, get to burning some wire. Okay, this is coming out really nice. We're uh, getting just a hair too hot, so we're gonna let it cool down for uh, 20 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll get back on it and finish this sucker out.
All right, we got it all welded out. Uh, no, I did not count uh, weld passes, but there's quite a few in there if you can see them all stacked up there. Looks pretty good, a little inconsistent. Should do the job. All right, so plan is let this thing cool off because this is uh, hot enough to cook a couple steaks on. And then uh, we will flip it over. We'll unbolt this, make sure nothing moves. Uh, you know, kind of clean up some stuff, flip it over, back gouge that crack on the inside, preheat it, weld it again. It's a couple beads down there. And then we're gonna set up the S power and get her all dialed in. All right, well, it's uh, it's about quitting time. The sun's about going down, so we'll let the sucker cool off and we'll get back on it. All right, this thing's nice and cool now. <clears throat> Took our, uh, our bolt out. This thing is just, just perfect. We move just enough where we can get this out. It's about exactly what I was thinking. About what I was thinking it would do. So now we're gonna flip it over. And then uh, back gouge that crack and weld that seam on the bottom so that will be 100% joint clean off our uh, our tabs here and then on to the next step
All right, we got our runoff tabs cut off. Now we're gonna sand it down. And we'll, we'll blend the corners in. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm gonna leave the weld on the outside. We'll leave the weld on the inside. I'm, I'm debating on this. I'm thinking I'll probably leave it, but let's, let's do the edges and see what it looks like. All right, so we got this all blended in. I think it came out all right. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a two-part video. Um, part two, we'll be using the S-Power to line bore the side. And I know you guys have been asking a lot about S-Power, so it's coming. All right, well, stay tuned for part two, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.